Okay, what is health insurance? What is uh, the nature of it? What? It, how does it function? What are the uh, requirements of the insurer and the insured? And what are the most common types of uh, health insurance relationship? Okay, th there's a lot to cover in this area, but um, a brief synopsis. Um, the insured uh, seeks health coverage uh, from an insurer based upon the contingency of some occurrence uh, and it's generally based on the type of harm suffered uh, by the insured that the insurer will cover the cost of medical treatment uh, and that may include hospital stay, physician treatment, uh, pharmaceuticals, etc. Um, towards that condition and sometimes it's just routine checkups to prevent some future occurrence, but anytime you receive these medical services uh, pursuant to a covered risk or contingency, uh, and that contingency is going to be some health uh, effect on the insured, uh, then the insurer will uh, step in and pay that cost or some portion of that cost. Okay, now insurers often limit the types of coverage and the amount that it'll pay. Um, the t type of coverage might be uh, excluding what we know as pre-existing conditions, that is they won't cover a certain type of conditions that the insured is known to already have. Now they're under uh, federal law there are limitations that the insurer can't uh, not cover uh, things past a certain period back 18 months to two years uh, before seeking the insurance coverage um, and then with the introduction of the Affordable Care Act it generally prohibits uh, insurers in general from including any pre-existing conditions um, exclusions in, in the policy of coverage okay but uh, again they the provisions of the Affordable Care Act are discussed in a different video series but um, but this is the nature of the relationship they're going to cover specific types and contingencies of loss and they're going to limit the amount to which they'll pay some of the limits that they place are the contingencies for um, excuse me some of the terms that they require of the insured before the insurer will step in and pay costs are um, so premiums to start with the insured has to pay premiums towards uh, the coverage that's stated in the insurance contract. Part two, deductibles. In many situations the insured will have to pay a certain amount towards any covered services before the insurer will ever pay towards anything. Maybe uh, a hundred, fifty, a thousand, ten thousand dollars uh, that the insured would have to pay towards any amount of services, any combination of services or in some situation towards a specific event before um, the insurer will step in and start paying. Then you have coinsurance. Uh, this is generally a percentage of any covered incident or cost uh, incurred as a result of a covered incident that the insured will have to pay alongside with the insurer and this could be a 5%, 10%, 20% of whatever cost is in incurred. Okay, And then uh, copay and this is just a stated amount that the insured would have to pay uh, at the time that they seek any form of, uh, of uh, health services, okay, and this is an amount not covered by the insurer that in any time an individual is going to seek uh, any type of health services that they would have to pay this amount before the insurer would have any obligation to step in. So most policies have some combination of these. There'll be a copay requirement, there'll be an annual deductible for individuals and then for group policies for all individuals that they have to meet before they'll step in. There can be co-insurance rates. Sometimes they'll have caps on them up to a specific amount and they'll have caps as to uh, in no event will the insured have to pay more than this. This is total uh, liability limits for the insured. And then uh, of course premiums is generally going to be a part of any policy uh, unless it's paid for by some third party and the insured is not responsible for those premiums. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the common types of health care plans that you'll see on the market today. Um, one of the first ones, a preferred, pre preferred provider plan. This is a situation where you're in a health plan and you have a in-network a uh, group of services where you're designated to them. Uh, you receive services at a stated contract amount that the insurer will cover at this amount. If you go to a service provider outside of this preferred provider network, um, you're going to incur higher costs and the insurer will not pay the full amount towards that. So it pushes some of the liability for going outside of this network where you don't have uh, pre-negotiated contractual rates for services. So the insurer puts that responsibility on the insured. So that's one. Uh, health management organizations. Well, these are uh, 
general health service uh, groups where you uh, have an in-network area where you can go uh, to providers within this network and uh, providers outside of that network may generally are not covered. Now, within the HMO, um, you're going to have a primary care uh, provider uh, that would generally, you'd have to see them first before you go to any specialist within the network and they would have to refer you out to others. Okay, and, but generally the network will be comprehensive. So any uh, type or amount of coverage uh, you would need, you would get within the, within the HMO. Okay, uh, exclusive provider organization. Uh, this is similar uh, in nature to, uh, I guess, an HMO, but um, it's in network and it's gonna eliminate uh, any coverage again for uh, outside of network. Okay, that you can only go to these these physicians within the network uh, to seek treatment. Okay, uh, point of service plans. This is going to again divide between in work, in network, and out of network plans. Uh, but you'll be uh, um, designated to a specific primary care physician in an area, or you'll be uh, designated to a primary care area, right, or geography where this is in network, and they generally uh, uh, will limit their coverage for out-of-service um, costs, um, you know, except in emergency situations, of course, that's a contingency in most plans, um, but outside of that network, they won't, they won't pay, okay? Then you've got your high-deductible plans. Now, these are commonly used in connection, again, with something called a flexible uh, spending account with employers. That is, uh, the high deductible plan means you have to pay a large amount, $5,000, $10,000, $15,000, $20,000 towards any health uh, expenses that you may incur before the insurer will kick in any uh, help or payment towards those expenses at all. Uh, okay, so these are high risk plans. So the way they use them in, in conjunction with employment is that an employer will often offer a flexible spending account where you can put a percentage of uh, your um, or a certain dollar amount into um, this flexible account. And uh, at the end, it, you can use, and it's tax free or tax deferred, assuming you don't use, you use it. Um, but you put that money tax free into the flexible spending account and you use those funds to cover towards the high deductible, right? Or the, what you're trying to meet uh, towards the high deductible uh, for any services. So you can spend from that and you're spending, like I say, on pre-tax dollars so your uh, dollars go further. Now the problem is you generally lose the money in this account at the end of every fiscal year. Okay, so if you don't spend all this money in the flexible spending account, it goes away. And so the next year when the policy renews, um, you're going to have to put money back in this flexible spending account, but you generally only have in it what you put into it. Okay, so while the cost of the high deductible plan will be much lower, you'll be able to use these uh, flexible spending accounts to go towards a premium. Now, the Affordable Care Act has affected these largely because lots of times uh, these high deductible plans do not meet the qualifications of the Affordable Care Act and can give rise to penalties. So employers are not offering them or doing away with them. Individuals can't keep this type of, of coverage. Um, so basically they have to go to a different type of plan that goes to a more traditional uh, you pay a certain amount uh, type scenario. But anyway, these are the uh, primary types of uh, health coverage plans that you're going to see on the market um, that are available for purchase at, at this time.